<sighs> it's been an insane week. Let me tell you about it. Developers always have shiny object syndrome where we see something new and we just wanna chase after it. And 2023 has a lot of shiny objects. And since I'm a developer, I went to the shiny object capital of the world, CES in Las Vegas. Now I had a blast at CES. I posted about it on Instagram and Twitter. Check that out, by the way. I'm not gonna sit here and pretend that the changing color BMW, the 8K VR headset, or the Tesla Hyperloop wasn't cool. They were incredible. But I went to CES for the developers, for those looking to build on the cutting edge of technology. I walked over 100K steps on the Las Vegas Convention Center to see what new technology developers can get a hold of so they can build amazing products. Or get rich whatever you code for. What I love the most is that I was able to talk to the developers directly in some cases, rather than the marketing people. I saw so much that it'd be hard to not put it in a three hour video. So the timestamps are below for each individual section. All right, let's check it out. If you've ever tried tracking your macros and your eating habits, then you know how annoying it is. Nuvi Labs is a software that uses computer vision to identify the food on your plate and give you the macros on what's on your plate. This is really cool for my personal life as I'm looking to slim down a little. But what really intrigued me is the openness they had for developers to integrate within their API. So actually we also are planning, we are launching an API so other users can input our API on their front end and we can actually customize it to the end user. For example, are you gonna make an app that calculates things for diabetes? Okay. So you can input the API and use it to your end use. Awesome. Look out my fitness pal. Another cool idea is American Painting House that built educational toys for K-12 education. They had these toys that let you connect and change parameters of your program. You have a scratch-like interface on your computer that connects directly to it. Some of these blocks represent for loops, conditionals, and more. Tyler also showed me a little demo that you program a mouse to go through a maze to the cheese. Pretty cool. Being a visual learner is huge, and with things like this, even people older than K-12 could probably get into it. Something that sounds so complicated is training an AI model. Sometimes I think if I collected this huge amount of data and just knew how to train it to a model, then maybe it would be some sort of value. Kikzo, hope I'm saying that right, lets you collect and label data, train a model, and do final deployment within their tool. Their demo showed what it's like to showcase different weights on top of a sensor and to label it depending on the weight of it, like heavy or light. Now, this type of demo could just be done with like two if statements, but the incredible part is the software itself. For those looking to get involved in the data science or machine learning environment, this would be a cool tool to try out some small projects. Something that was massive this year and the last five years too, honestly, is IoT. For those not in the know, that stands for Internet of Things. Think about little computers that can talk to the cloud or each other using sensors and other cool things. Think about this though. If you had a small computer like a Raspberry Pi, Arduino, or some other microcomputer, how would you get that to connect to the internet? Especially if it's in the middle of nowhere. Initially, that's what drew me into Once's booth, the IoT SIM card for very low charges. They also had a code editor up, so I had to check it out. They showcased as well their Once OS, which is an OS that offers developers many features that make their life easier when working with hardware. Speaking of operating systems, a familiar face was showing off their IoT technology this year. I love Ubuntu, and I thought it was really, really cool how they talked about Ubuntu Core, which is a version of Ubuntu that can work on lower computer device. And for you Linux nerds out there, I had to ask. Ubuntu, it's all about open source. Does the Ubuntu core follow the same principle, the same ideology that you have towards the open source community? Absolutely, Ubuntu core is completely open source and snaps are definitely adopted by the community. We actually just had a gentleman stop by earlier. They're a customer of ours and he was talking about how They've already put some pull requests in for Snapcraft, some aspects of their project, something they want to get integrated into, into Snap. I love open source operating systems. I love open source operating systems, so I'm glad that Ubuntu was there. Also, where can I get one of those shirts? Speaking of wearables, 
3M had a really big booth showcasing lots of cool things, but what I was really interested in was trying the Microsoft HoloLens. I am a big fan of AR and VR technology, which by the way, you can check out on the Fast Forward podcast, link in the description. And I finally got to try the HoloLens this year. They demoed the HoloLens where you grab a real life post-it note and paste it on top of an AR number you see on the screen. This will make a mural. HoloLens came out a little while ago, so the technology is a little behind. Something that was good was the tracking real-time surfaces. However, something that was really distracting was the field of view. Imagine if you had glasses on and you can only see things through the center of it you would still feel like you're in a dark room. I understand why this is an enterprise product as I don't really see a use for it for consumers, but it's looking really good, Microsoft. Microsoft had a lot of cool tech this year. They even had a influencer lounge. I guess I'm technically an influencer. It is what it is. There they showed off a lot of cool consumer technology, some laptops and monitors that you can fit your Java class names on. Speaking of which, I thought my monitor was ultra wide, but there was a ton of ultra wide monitors. I don't mean it's ultra wide as in it's ultra wide. I mean, it's so wide you need to Uber to get to the other side. We cover this more on the podcast, so make sure you check it out, but is the see-through display. Now this isn't a consumer product or even has a planned release, but I was thinking of some really awesome ways that developers could take advantage of this type of display, especially in gaming. It just is cool technology. The world of VR is on a race to get us into Ready Player One. I checked out B Haptic specifically because they advertise their developer tools right on the booth panel. It's the key to my heart. B Haptics is a suit that contains vibrating units. I think that's the word inside and allows developers to choose where and when each of them can go off. They have Unity and Unreal SDK, so developers can get started right away. This could make shooters 10 times better. Currently, it's retailing for 500 USD, which is pricey. But I know there are some of you that hate this world a lot. If you're really into this, check out Thrill Seeker. It's one of my favorite channels when it comes to VR and AR related content. He also went to CES. I wish I met him though. Metaverse is something we've been hearing a lot about. And trust me, there was a lot of Metaverse stuff this year. One of them was called Caliverse. They had a massive booth. Like seriously, I think it might have been bigger than some billion dollar brands. There they talked about a new Metaverse where you can buy things and explore virtual worlds. It was somewhat dystopian like. And the worst part is, is that it's just a proof of concept. It's nothing right now. There was also lots of other metaverse like things like virtual offices and uh, yeah. Okay, this booth was really awesome. If you wanna get into hardware like robotics, IoT, or even just software, they have lots of amazing products you can use. They had a lot of things to showcase at the booth like sensors that went underwater, a remote control car, and more. They were primarily showing off their second version of the smart bug. This has a motion sensor, pressure sensor, ultrasonic sensor, and more. However, their smart bug version two has built-in machine learning built into the device. Also, it's in a ladybug. They gave me the smart bug version two to show on camera here, as well as a smart bug version one. Once this gets the full release, I'm excited to give it a try. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe to make sure you see the progress on that. Google was awesome. They had their own building showcasing what was new in the world of Android. I found that their booth didn't showcase much in terms of what developers can do with their tools though. More so what consumers can directly engage with. I did find this cool advanced technology though. We're testing out the new gyroscope feature on Android ice cream. Woo! It's pretty good. Very immersive. Woo! It's working well. Right next to the Google building is a company called Here. Here was showcasing their technologies that developers specifically can plug into. Finally, some place that is calling my name. Here mostly focuses on business to business, but offers developers many tools that are related to location-based services, such as routing, geocoding and search, high precision location awareness, map data, and much more. Of course, developers have the ability to choose between the two big dogs like Google Maps or Mapbox. 
So I specifically asked why developers should choose here instead. Here's what they had to say play on words there. Yeah, absolutely. It's a great question. So for us, I think the flexibility that we provide developers, really what we take the approach to any developer, again, if you're in a, a large corporation, or for that matter, just an independent developer, what are the tools and the flexibility that you need to build your application? So we really think having flexible terms, having the ability to use a variety of data sources. So appropriately, Mapbox, it's a wonderful UI. And underneath that is a whole host of, of map data. Yeah. And so to your question, what we are for developers to have that flexibility to bring their own data, build on top with various UIs and rendering. Use and your own data as well. Correct, that's yeah. right. Overall, it seems like here has some overlap with other services, but primarily focuses on geolocation-based services in the automotive industry. I'm looking forward to trying this out. I also met a huge celebrity at CES this year, Spot the Dog. If you follow me on Twitter and Instagram, then you can see the pictures I took with Spot. It was really awesome seeing such a beautiful dog walking about at CES. Sadly, none were for adoption. We also walked into the Amazon Web Services booth and seen what they were doing there. They had a whole room demonstrating what future technologies is using the AWS infrastructure. One of them was this RoboBar cart that will move around your house and automatically go in your fridge to get you a beer. By far the best innovation we've come up with yet. Or a shower that measures your carbon footprint. Or this little robot that's your little companion. Why was the cat sitting on the computer? Moxie, why? <laughs> Good guess. To Good keep guess. an eye on the mouse. <laughs> It was a long day for Moxie. Again, similar to other booths here at CES, it was mostly targeted towards consumers. When I asked some of the people there that were working about developer experience, they really didn't know what to say. Another code editor has been spotted, and better yet, it's from Canada. Distributive is a way to distribute your code amongst many different devices with very little code and on the web stack. I'm talking about any device here. Yes, you can put code on a smart fridge. They claim that it's 16 times cheaper than using cloud resources. Dan was pretty technical, which was awesome to see at CES. The way it works is that when you compute something that is sent, you earn compute credits. You can then use these credits to compute elsewhere, almost creating a little economy. I'm interested to see how it works. Shout out to Canada. I'm a huge nerd, geek, whatever, so this one really interested me. Ambient weather are weather stations that you can use to track weather in your area. You install this machine and then you can use the metrics it gives you to view on the app. We're developers here. Can we just grab our own data? Yeah, so the way our devices work is they wirelessly communicate to this display. From that display, they can connect it to our network, Ambient Weather Network, and each weather station owner can generate an API key. Oh, okay. And if there's a developer who gets one of our development codes, that'll unlock our API, right? And then the API key that the weather station owner generates will allow a developer to access the data from their station. Wow. If you're in the IoT business or are just curious about the weather down to the exact numbers, this machine will give you a hyper reading of your area. Developers really question everything, don't they? OVR technology was showing off this little device that goes on your VR headset and lets you smell what's on your screen. It was really awesome and we go way more in depth with it on the podcast. However, they mentioned that they have Unity and Unreal SDKs that you can plug into and make your own smell from your games. How do you program smells? George mentions that it's going to be the same way you add audio components. Also, shout out to George. He says he's a fan of the videos. OLEDcom is a company that uses Li-Fi technology. Li-Fi? What's that? Light Fidelity is wireless connection using light. At the booth, they had them all set up on the ceiling and were able to communicate a video camera on a remote control car to a stream, all done by light, no Wi-Fi. What can this technology be used for? Well, currently it's being used in aviation, underwater applications, vehicles, and more. Moving back into the IoT things, we saw MicroEdge. MicroEdge makes different IoT devices that integrates with different machines. They specifically were showing off their embedded GUIs that you integrate within your machines. This makes it easy for developers or engineers to easily add an operating system, custom buttons, etc., onto their devices. It's completely based off of Android, so developers will be familiar with its dev environments. Maybe I should make a coffee machine. Oh, also, the CEO had MicroEdge shoes. 
Size 13, US men. Just throwing that out there. Okay, now we're getting into real advanced stuff. InnoFusion were showing off different LiDAR devices that it sells to automotive industries. It sells what they call the Falcon LiDAR system. For those who don't know, LiDAR stands for Light Imaging, Detection, and Ranging. LiDAR sensors is able to determine the range something is by targeting something with a laser and measuring the time for the light to return to the receiver. This makes it easy for computers to determine depth of something. With the LiDAR sensor, they also have a software where developers can plug into and use. AWS was also at the automotive area and they were showcasing a lot of their open source stuff. All right, now we're talking. They were showing off Carla, which is an open source simulator for autonomous driving research, which you can download for free. Here they were showing off how AWS can be used to capture real-time data while driving. Things like collision intensity, speed, and more is tracked. It was pretty cool. I got a chance to drive Carla and I was a little bit reckless. What I like seeing is just the visualization of data and talking to the developers there. It made me inspired to maybe just do something like this on my own. We checked out the brand new Vive XR Elite, which is HTC's response to the Quest Pro. Again, check out the podcast for Lee and I's full review on this thing, which you'll definitely want to see. But I was able to talk to some developers about what it's like developing in the mixed reality aspect of one of these devices. Sadly, I couldn't find this footage, but I talked to a couple of game developers while I was there who had games that were already on PC for a very long time and sold pretty well. They said porting over their existing games was really easy for the HTC Vive as they just had to downgrade some graphics and then use a different compile option. Developing in mixed reality is also pretty easy too as Unity and Unreal have really good tools for you to be able to develop on the Quest and the HTC Vive, which both use the same format. What happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. We basically just went to CES, ate Japanese barbecue, and then slept. However, CES was an incredible time, and it was so cool to talk to some of the developers at the conference. Realizing that a lot of these people are people like us who just had an idea and was able to build something really cool was enough of inspiration for me. And being able to pass down the inspiration directly to you is something that I am very committed to, so I thought it was an amazing experience. I am always looking for ways developers can be inspired and can try out the cutting edge of technology so they can build cool applications and contribute to the next version of our world. Hopefully you get inspired to build something after this. What do you want to build this year? Also, what conferences interest you? I definitely want to go and cover it so that I can inspire all of you. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe to become a better dev. Peace out coders.